I'm smiling through gritted teeth here because I've just discovered that my machine heads, my second hand machine heads that I paid £40 for, gold plated Grovers, which I thought were a bargain, are missing some washers. And I'm not very pleased about this. Um, these have got the washers on the one way, these have got the washers on the other way round, this one is miss missing the black washer and this has no washers at all. I think whoever had these before me had probably put wooden buttons on to match the guitar, maybe. I, I, I bought them from a luthier um, at a, a guitar fair. Uh, yeah, not so pleased. Anyway, I'll sort that out later. I think I'm going to stick with these machine heads. Um, might need to get new washers. Anyway, templates, that's what we're here to discuss and make. Um, I need four templates. I need uh, a headstock template, I need a neck profile template, and in my iPad I need two side templates. Now if any of you have been, if any of you, <laughs> if somebody must have been watching my videos somewhere, um, if you've, if you've been following this series, you will have seen that I've modelled this guitar in Blender, which is a sort of CGI um, animation program. Um, it's, it's, it's sort of come from the games industry, but it, it does do very good 3D modelling with texturing and everything. And it's quite good for pre-visualisation. Um, it's a bit, it's not quite a CAD program, it's more um, a graphical program. Um, so it has its drawbacks, <laughs> and one of them is the exporting of the plans. It's not really there to make plans with, not like something like SketchUp. But I've managed to get round this a few ways. Um, for my guitar top, um, I had to plot each point around the edge, and in fact, uh, for the bracing profile, again, I had to plot each point of each brace and work out where they went. I used graph paper for the outside, um, maybe I should have done the bracing at the same time, but I ended up having to physically measure each brace, all referenced to the centre of the sound hole and the, the edges of the guitar. But I got there, that took me a couple of hours to do, um, but I have my bracing um, plan ready. Um, for the headstock, I was able to basically just do a screenshot I got an orthogonal uh, view of the headstock up and took a screenshot and then in a graphics program just made sure it was the correct size before printing it and now I have my um, correct physical sized headstock. Um, having done that I, w I was able to do this which was a little bit more complicated, a little bit bigger, printed across two sheets. I mean if you're wondering about the numbers across the bottom it was so that I could get the, the the, uh, the copies lined up, but uh, that is that's a screenshot. You can see how pixelated it is, but that doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't have to be high resolution for what we need here. Um, so those two headstock and profile should be fairly straightforward. Um, what isn't so straightforward, and we're back to plotting points again, is the the guitar sides. Um, Obviously, the guitar sides are curved, and so in Blender, if I wanted to take, um, if I wanted to export that, or if I wanted to take a screenshot, I, I can't really do it. Um, the <laughs> straightening them in Blender, I think, would introduce all sorts of inaccuracies. In fact, I'm, I'm not really sure how you do it. So what I've done is I've plotted all the points of the sides, and then put them in a spreadsheet and then mathematically straightened the whole thing out by working out the distance from the end of the guitar that each point is. And the reason we're doing this is because the, um, the back is domed, or the front is domed as well, but very, very slightly. The back has a more pronounced dome, and also there's a slight taper on the guitar, not much, just a very slight taper. But it means that the sides of the guitar undulate a little bit as we get towards the closer to the middle of the dome here it's slightly higher and further away from the dome it's slightly lower and so it's it has quite a complex profile to it each side and each side is different this is not symmetrical um, so I need a template that will um, give me a cut guide 
for the sides because I need to cut them out before I bend them because cutting them once they're bent, tricky. Right, that's what I need to do. First up, I'm going to do the, the headstock template. And this gives us a, a little bit of chance to, to prototype a little bit. Because now that I've actually got the, the actual tuners, uh, machine heads, um, we can experiment with, with where they go and try, if I can, to achieve straight string pull. Now, I, I modelled these pretty much. I knew roughly what uh, tuners I was going to use, although the, the tuners that I modelled I think are very slightly different to this, but they were Grover tuners. I got the, um, the physical dimensions of, of some Grover tuners and uh, from a PDF from Grover and modelled them within Blender so that I, I knew where I could position them and um, but what I'm going to do I now that I've got the actual physical ones I can actually push them a little bit closer together and uh, whereas before the the strings weren't quite straight through these are these are our strings here now I've I've by pushing them a little bit in, um, I can get them the strings pretty much straight. Um, I, I don't think straight string pull is the holy grail that some people claim it is, <laughs> but yes, it, it, it's a definite advantage. It will make for more stable tuning, and uh, I'm going to be retuning this guitar a lot. I use a lot of open tunings, and this hopefully should make it easier to uh, retune. Um, no, no problems with uh, particularly the wound strings sticking in the nut, hopefully. Although, of course, there will be a break angle, so there will all, always be friction in the nut. But by having straight string pull, you, you're, you're reducing that friction as, as much as possible, really. So I need to get this cut out. I need to do it fairly accurately because this may turn into a router template. Um, but I, I may have to shave a little bit off the side. We, we'll see. If by pushing this tuner in, uh, this one here, we, we're getting very close to um, fouling the, the button on, on the headstock. Um, yeah, in fact, at the moment, that does look like it will foul. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about destroying the, the symmetry of this. I mean, it's asymmetrical, but it, it, has, a, it has form. It has a design to it. I took a long time in designing this, but hopefully I should be able to shave just a few millimeters off that without destroying the looks too much. Um, but we might just try to just fettle it down with a file or something after I've cut it. But I'm going to cut it to this shape initially, um, put the holes in for the tuners and, and see how we go.
together and see whether see whether we can work the tuners. The um, the template isn't as wide as the headstock is going to be, but at least it'll give us an idea of where the tuners sit and whether. Ooh, that is very tight. That that was the one that I was worried about. But it does actually work. I think I might be shaving something off that though. Mm. I think that's a bit too tight. So this side we're fine. There we're fine. That is workable, <laughs> but it's very, very close. I think I need to shave a little bit off that. I think I need to come in. that more of a sweep. Bit more of a scoop in there. Looks pretty good to me. Next thing to do is to get the side template marked up, or the, both of them. Um, and I, I mentioned how I'd done this at the beginning of the video with the spreadsheet, but I, I just want to show you how the spreadsheet works. Here's my spreadsheet. And what we've got here, if you imagine the side of the guitar modelled as a series of vertical lines with about 90 of them all the way along, all the way along the side of the guitar. These are the X, Y, Z coordinates of the each point along the back of the guitar. It's the back that we're modelling here. We're going to assume that the front is almost flat because there's only about a millimetre and a half difference um, across the front of the guitar and, and that can easily be sanded into the side on the radius dish. The back is different, it's about 15 millimetres uh, difference as we go along 
the uh, along the, uh, the the back of the guitar. There is there is a um, a taper uh, from the bottom to the top built in, and then you've got the uh, the undulation uh, because of the fact that the the back is domed. Um, the Y coordinate is down the side of the guitar, and this is the Y coordinate of the front. As I say, we're, we're assuming that the front is is flat for this exercise. And here are the coordinates of each point for the for the uh, rear of the guitar. And so by taking the difference of these, we get the depth of the guitar here. And I'm adding 1.5 millimeters to allow for the binding. Um, so th the, these these are coordinates are the depth of the guitar and then the X and the Z coordinate X and Z these give us the uh, position um, in the plane of the front um, X Z and then Y um, back down if you're if you're looking at as if the guitar was laying flat on this iPad um, so what we're doing here is by squaring and adding and then taking the square root of these two doing Pythagoras on them we're getting the width of each segment that we've divided the side into and we're plotting that here distance from previous I've, I've labeled it I hope this is making sense I'm trying to explain this as best I can and then this column here is a running total of all these little widths of the, the segments that the side is divided into. And so by doing this, what we're effectively doing is we're flattening the side out and we're getting a profile. And the profile is the distance from the end of the guitar here and then the, the depth of the side of the guitar here. And these two columns are what we're going to be plotting on this sheet of uh, MDF. I hope that makes sense. Uh, but by, as I say, by doing this, we're effectively taking a 3D model of the guitar and we're flattening the side out um, so that into a, a cut template. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So these, two my, these are my reference edges. This is the left side that we're doing. This is the front. And this is the back. And this is the end. Uh, the uh, the foot of the guitar with the heel of the neck, the neck being up this end. Um, very important we label this, we don't want to get these mixed up. profile there. That says it's going around the top bout. That will be uh, left side will be here. So that will be <coughs> that will be the top bout, uh, the top corner here. Top corner there. So it swoops round like so. Because that's the low point. Oh, sorry, that's the low point there because it's the furthest away from the dome and it's also down this end. This this end is slightly thinner than this end and you can't see that but hey. I don't trust myself to be able to super glue this down like I did with headstock so I'm going to just tack it in place and then just prick through it with a brad awl to mark the key points and then just draw the, the missing features in to create my template. I've got a volute on here. The volute starts just in front of the nut. I might bring that back a little bit, but I wanted the 
the volute to be on the bend. I think that's probably about the right place for the volute, but uh, that may change during the neck carve. Let's hope I can see the, the marks. <laughs> yes, I can. Nut marks, very important. And if we got this right, there should be 378 millimeters to the end of the tenon, which there is. Good. Ready to cut out. Now I've got these templates, the guitar feels somehow a lot more physical. So it was a good exercise to do. I'm, I'm really glad I did this. And it gives me a few options going forward. A warning that I will be jumping around a bit. I may be doing some work on the neck. Uh, I may be preparing the sides. I, obviously I will be doing the bracing, um, but I, I'm not gonna guarantee what the next video is. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna be jumping around a bit. So make sure you subscribe uh, so you don't miss anything and do all the usual things, share the video, hit like, um, comment away, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!